This is why you're failing at mastering programming and you need to learn a few things in order to get yourself out of this continuous cycle of failure essentially so in this video i'm going to show you exactly how to unfail yourself or is that even unfail is that even a word well it is now okay so this is a book of bach one of most respected sought out classical musician composer that ever lived in my opinion at least love bach by the way this is a book that i bought a long time ago and i like reading about musicians because i'm also a musician but why am i bringing up bach or music what is the relationship between music and programming stay tuned till the end of the video where i'm going to demystify a secret that i've learned about music and programming so i've been programming for almost 19 years wow 19 years that's a very long time i've been teaching online teaching people how to code for about 10 years now but then i thought you know what i want to look on the internet what do people think about programming especially what causes people to keep failing at mastering programming and so as a good citizen of the internet i decided to go to reddit yes i went to reddit to check out what people are saying the reasons why people fail at programming. Here's one question on Reddit about this topic. What are some of the most common reasons people fail as software web developers? And there's a lot of answers here, okay? And as the title say, what are some of the reasons that someone doesn't make as a developer? Can you become, uh, can anyone become a decent developer? What are some of the traits and habits of people who succeed as developers? Also, what are common mistakes that beginners make and people who pass that beginning stage and go further on but find themselves lost ah such a great question this is why i like this question it just puts everything into perspective there's no hiding if you ask yourself these questions no matter at what level you are even for myself sometimes you have to realize that if you try to answer these questions there's a lot of truth that will come out so that's a good exercise for all of us i will say what are some of the reasons that people don't make as a developer here you can see that he says they stop learning and eventually give up. That is very true. It's so hard sometimes that you don't have the motivation to continue because things get hard and you stop and just give up. Okay. And the next one is, can anyone become a decent developer? Well, sure, in theory. But the reality is that a lot will fail to do so. Wow. Very, very direct. What are some of the traits and habits of people who succeed as developers? They stick, I like this, they stick with it until they're employed and show continuous growth. This is really good and is so true in anything, but specifically in programming, because truth be told, this this is not easy, but, but it doesn't have to be overly complex and complicated because you have so many resources. But I think sometimes that is the problem, is that the sticking with it is really hard, especially in the beginning. Imagine when you start working out, as an example, because I enjoy doing that. The first two, three months, if you really go hard, it is those are the most, the hardest months because you are forming a habit. So whenever you're starting out, you are trying to form a habit. It's really hard. That's when motivation has to come in. But even after motivation is gone, you have to have this sense of sticking with it going even when you don't feel like it then you have this pivot moment where you become a little bit comfortable it becomes a habit and so it doesn't hurt as much now the same thing is applied in programming i think people are here and they're going through this process right here and it's getting really hard but they don't realize once they get to the top here the things get a little bit easier in the sense that it's not as jarring as in the beginning and so but the problem is that that is when it hurts the most and people quit so i really agree with this also what are common mistakes that beginners make blindly following tutorials without engaging with the content of said tutorials that is i've said this many times in fact i should probably find out who's the person is and then send them flowers or cookies but seriously it says never build anything of their own constantly switching languages ah oh, yes that is the problem the uh, what do you call the shiny object syndrome we all have it it is such a, and the internet doesn't help there's always a new language there's always a new technique there's always this there's always that there's always it never ends and so it's really hard especially nowadays to first of all stick with it secondly if you do you just continue continuously go through this tutorial hell and you really never get out of it 
So it's tutorial after tutorial and you're not making any progress because you're just spreading yourself too thin. And also, as it says here, switching languages the moment you start in Java and then it gets really hard, you decide because you heard somebody saying JavaScript is the thing, you go to JavaScript and then Python, of course, is the thing you go to, and all of a sudden you just all over the place and there's nothing to grab onto. And so stick to one language until you are proficient in that and then you will see that it's easy for you to transfer those skills and learn any other languages so totally agree i can see this person is an engineer because it's very detailed taking the question and answering the next question and so forth so and people who pass that beginning stage and go further on but find themselves lost the answer here says most people find themselves lost after that initial learn how to write basic code stage they ask themselves what now the answer is continue to build stuff that puts you closer to your goal i mean i can't even say anything after that that's true just keep going that is the problem you've got to keep going keep going keep going don't give up okay okay so if you go through there's a lot of good answers here of course but i want the other one i would like to point out here is by andy bmka andy if you are watching this please say hello because you know all of you guys okay common mistakes that i see people making on this sub as beginners not being consistent of course a lot of people who will start learning take breaks for days or weeks eventually stop for months then basically have to start from zero ah this is so important it's all about streaks right so you start something be consistent with it you don't go to the gym for two days and then don't go for two months and then go back and expect to get the results that you want that's just not how it works in anything and number two says course language paralysis oh it goes back to the language what language do i use what is the best language what is x y and z really the best language is the one that you pick pick anything just don't just pick html that's not even just pick a good programming language and go for it burnout that's another thing to talk about i've seen people literally quit their job thinking they're going to be able to put 40 hours a week into learning but that's really hard because learning to program is mentally exhausting mentally exhausting yes it's very 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 exhausting don't go too hard right out of the gate do a, do some learning every day but take lots of breaks especially when you're facing a tough problem i tell my students all the time whenever you are watching my tutorials my videos my course and something is not clicking and you're frustrated just stop pause go take a walk go drink some water or tea it really it's it's that easy okay getting stuck in tutorial oh this comes back all the time getting stuck in tutorial hell lots of people just follow youtube how to build insert app or website clone right and okay so there is some validity to following tutorials i mean you have to i do sell courses i have courses and i give you content here about programming and and i hope you find it value but the most important thing that you have to remember is that don't just get stuck in a tutorial hell don't just become the person who goes from tutorial to tutorial to tutorial without building anything okay that's very important because number one you're not going to make any progress if you're just watching things number two remember it's all about building you have to go back to knowing why are you doing x y and z why are you learning these skills in the beginning you have to copy in the beginning with any skill you have to copy what people are doing you have to try to do or to build things that already exist right so i think it's important to build something uh, like an app that is popular the idea is not for you to just stay there it is to see how things are built of something that you can see that you use so it's okay to build a clone but don't stop there the idea is that you build a clone you learn how it works but then you move on all right so and i scroll all the way down there's this guy called spin wizard 69 i hope you're watching this video probably not not putting in the effort and he has all in all caps He's very adamant about his opinions. So he's answering to number two, says no. The idea that anybody can become a developer is complete idiocy, okay? Number three, love the technology, never stop learning. Yes, sir. Number four, the most common mistake, people think they can be developer by putting in minimal effort to learn a language and not actually study computer science, yes. Learning to program takes commitment and I think beginners underestimate the time needed to be one conversant in a language. So he's got a good points here. Uh, I don't think that you have to study computer science in per se, go to a college and get yourself into debt 
to be good programmer but i do see that you have to understand what he probably means here you have to learn not just the coding part of things but you have to learn about the computer science side of things like algorithms data structures and so forth very good points here i hope this was helpful now the moment you've been waiting for which is the correlation between the computer science and classical musicians or classical music i love bach music it's amazing okay so what is the correlation between computer programming and music classical music to be specific it doesn't matter if you're a musician or not this is not a point the point being is that music is the highest way that every culture uh, is, was was able to convey emotions feelings throughout all the civilizations so music is what i call the highest form of communication because it's through music that we can emote emotions uh, we can release stress we can communicate at a human level. Music has its own language, which is called musical notation. So musical notation is just a system, just like a programming language, a system of symbols that tell musicians how to play a certain piece, right? So we have notes, we have tempos, we have the beat, and so many other notations. Now, a musician, just like a programmer, has to learn how the musical notation works that way that musician can translate that physically so that they can play and emote that emotion to the audience. So what happens is that when a musician is able to convey, it's able to transform that message, take that message from a written form, the musical notation, into something that we can see, but we can hear, we can feel, that is amazing because there's magic that happens. A beautiful and emotional uh, and fulfilling experience really is brought to life just through music. Now, the centerpiece of everything here is the musician and the music, but the musician, because the musician is the vehicle through which the music has to flow so that then it can be presented to the audience, to you and I. You may say, okay, Paul, okay, wait a minute. We're talking about programming here. This is not a music appreciation <laughs> lesson. Now, the question you have to understand here is that how do musicians become good? How do classical musicians in particular are able to read something and practice and then create this magical experience for all of us to enjoy? What kind of training a musician needs to go through to be able to emote such emotion, to be able to play a piece that was written in 16, 1700s and make it so good? And the answer, my friend, is fall immersion. What that means is a musician, just like a programmer, had to decide at some point that this is what I want to do and had to go through a training process that keeps going forever and ever and ever. How do musicians, classical musicians, trained in this case, how do they practice? So musicians have a system that allows them to learn pieces of music and deliver that to the audience. And the first thing they do is they have to rehearse. Now, rehearsals is a stage where musicians discover a piece of music and they listen to it. The idea here is to listen and study that piece of music. And it may take a long time, it may take a short moment of time, it doesn't matter. The most important thing here, the rehearsal process, is that they have to listen to this piece of music and then they have to start thinking about getting ideas on how to interpret that piece of music. The second stage is they have to be able to deliberately focus on learning that piece. Learning music is very complicated. Even professional musicians, professional classical musicians, they have to deliberately put themselves in the music, reading the score, understanding the score, practicing, uh, rehearsing, and really learn the piece. So they're able to decipher what was written in this musical notation and extract that and physically be able to play it. And because this can be very stressful and time consuming, musicians also have to go through the next stage, which is important, is to remember why they fell in love with that piece that they are working on in the first place, because it is hard work. Right, so by always remember the reason why they brought themselves to that place, to that piece, it helps them continue when things get challenged. Teacher told me once that you have to get to the point where you are able to focus, laser focus on a piece, part of music where you have the most trouble with, right? So if you have issues with two or three bars, you focus intentively on that part. 
so that you get it right. Okay, we talk about music and all that stuff. Now let's go bring it all back to programming. Now we talk about rehearsals, like in musical context, musicians study recordings and scores and do all the things they need to do to understand this music. Now decoding equivalent to rehearsals, in my opinion, is before jumping into coding, it's very useful to study the problem you're tackling. So the idea is to not just thinking about decoding part of things, but thinking about what is it what is the end goal? What is it that you're trying to solve? And this is very important because it will give you the strategies that you need to focus on in order to be successful at the next levels, as opposed to just jumping right in. And number two, as musicians use this technique of deliberate focus on learning, the same thing we can do in coding. So in coding, the coding equivalent would be to make sure when you're learning to code, to set realistic goals and focused objectives. For instance, you might decide to understand a specific algorithm so you could change up your environment so that anytime you're working on a certain part of your code, you want to change your environment so that you are helped to focus on just that. So number three, which was remembering why you love and why you started this whole journey. So as you know, programming can get very, very tedious. It's not easy, it's hard, but remembering exactly why you're doing what you're doing, what is the end goal? Could be to get a better job, could be to be able to build your own application. Uh, sometimes it could be just for a hobby. Whatever it is, you have to have that goal in mind as you continue. Of course, going back to what musicians do real well, which is focus on areas that you're weak. That is when that you don't avoid those weak areas. This is when you actually find time and focus on those weak areas so you can improve your coding. It's really easy to just focus on what you get instead of what you don't get in coding. So focus on the areas that you don't understand as well. Take the time and really focus there because that is where you need to focus on. That is where the beauty, if you go back to music, comes from if you really hone in those difficult parts. Because once you understand that, then your coding skills will really take off. There's a relationship between becoming a master musician and becoming a master coder. Okay, so I hope I was able to deliver this comparison. I hope this was enjoyable. And because those are two of my passions, music and coding. And I hope this was helpful. So my final thoughts here are, if you're struggling with learning to code, programming, here's what you need to do. Number one, you have to find your why. Why do you want to learn this? Why do you want to keep learning this? Why is it that you want to hone in these skills and continue learning this? Because this is not easy, but why is that you're doing this? It's important to do this because then when things get hard, you're not just going to run away. Number two, you need to be willing to give it time, which means how long will it take? How much time are you willing to give in order to get really good at mastering programming? And you have to decide. Number three, just pick a programming language. Doesn't matter. It's just don't pick HTML. <laughs> Nothing wrong with HTML, but pick something, a natural programming language, anything, Java, JavaScript, Python, whatever it is that is out there, just pick one and go with it. Don't overthink it. And number four, you have to practice, 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 and practice. Intentional practice, full immersion, that is the way to go. And number five, enjoy the journey. This is beautiful. It's going to be hard, yes, but you have me and I will always help you. Thank you so much for your time and I'll see you next.